All right. So what you should do first is, so we're going to give you some kind of structure for doing the project. So we'll, we'll take the example of oil, okay, which is one of your commodities. So you have to just repeat. Obviously, I can't cover all the commodities. So you have to repeat uh, this for most of the other of the other commodities. Okay, other other assets. Okay, so what we have to do is we can start first of all. So uh, the fundamental part I'll come to later. I'll show you where to get fundamental information. The theory of fundamentals is a little bit more complex. Okay, and a little bit more. It, it does not have that much structure actually. And whereas in the case of TA, especially the the style of TA that we have covered so far. Okay, just looking at simple trend analysis. That is a much simpler set of ideas. Okay, and actually that is quite powerful. Okay, so you should not be fooled by the simplicity. In this itself, what you have learned so far is actually, if you just apply what you've learned so far in a systematic manner, it can actually, uh, you know, uh, you know, you can use this for the rest of your life, and actually, you can find uh, it'll be quite, it can be quite successful if you're disciplined about it. Okay, you have to be very disciplined. Okay, here we have this. All right. So how do you set up this? So the first thing that so we are going from a TA perspective now. Initially, we are just covering it from a TA perspective. Then I'll come to the fundamentals. How would you do it from a TA perspective? Obviously, you have to look at the price action. Okay. So these charts normally we refer to in TA as price action. Okay. So what you have to do is, as I've told you, one good practice is make sure you have as much data as possible. Your data range should be as uh, sort of wide as uh, your the, the circumstances allow okay so here you can see this data range starts on on Oanda. the um, data starts from which period 2004 something yes. um, yeah something in 2004 i even i can't see the dates fully okay on this display but it's around 2004 but we have a better chart and i will try to put all the links into your uh, into that standard file where we are putting all the links okay so here I found one chart okay this is the index Mundi chart um, this may let me try to make this a little bit bigger actually there's a better view of this chart somewhere so this is actually oil prices from I want to just blow up this image but anyway that's not happening so So if you see this chart now, so one of the things you should do is long term, as much long term data as possible. This is from 1988 onwards. Okay, you can see from 88 to 98, you can see where oil prices used to be. This is very useful because oil is such an important commodity globally. Just studying the history of the oil price will teach you a lot about uh, what happened historically, what happened in terms of the oil price shock and all that. You don't see the oil price shock here. Actually, I might have a better chart, but let me just stop here for the moment and I'll show you the chart later. But the uh, so point is to get as much data as possible, okay? And then you have to form a view, okay? Because you're doing TA, so your which means when you're doing TA, your view has to be based completely on past price action. And then you might look at volume and open interest and all that. We don't, we don't need to get into all that at this stage. Just price action, and since we have not studied any te technical indicators, you don't have time to. You can read up on them uh, on your own. You can read up using that. Uh, I've given you that chart school link, okay? So you can. That's a good link. Uh, that's a good source of information uh, so you can read up on technical indicators if you want to and you if you want you can practice on Oanda also you have many technical indicators available okay so you can use all that but for the moment I'm just going to show you simple very simple uh, pattern based analysis okay so you look at all this you can see this is where the pr price is now okay so this is you can see the long-term history of the oil price and so what you have to do is you look at this and then we will come to you ideally you should set up this kind of a palette view you need not have eight windows if you want to have only four windows that's up to you i've given you eight here because it's a maximum i like to look at all the different time frames but there's not much value addition in some of the additional time frames so you can easily cut this down to four if you want now how will you get this what you have to do is i'll just show you the way to get this let's say we have uh, i need to open another browser because here i've got this login let this remain so I'm going to open another browser on this um, what we are going to we are just going to open web charts on Oanda okay we're going to open web charts so obviously in one browser Oanda will accept only one login okay so that because I want to have a different login I'm going to just go in and open another browser and I'll show you how you're going to do it um, if you want to have this chart okay 
maybe we don't need to go through all this but i'm just showing you i mean it is taking up time but uh, let's just go through this process anyway so that you know how to set up these these charts are in uh, they are coded in html5 okay so these are actually that's why you can run this in the browser java charts you can no longer run in the browser because uh, chrome and all the browsers have stopped supporting java they don't support java applets anymore which is a shame because we had some really good charts on java okay so this we don't need so i'm going to just go for trade dot um, trade.wander.com if you go into trade.wander.com it will give you uh, yeah it will give you this kind of prompt so you go for trade.wander let me put this into the uh, into your um, this is actually 2410 so that's the first hyperlink uh, you also have so this is a parallel way to get into the Oanda charts one is you have the desktop icon okay so that's the desktop platform for oanda that's called the desktop platform this is the web platform okay how would you get into this kind of view on the web platform you can also trade completely through the web platform if you're comfortable but i personally find the the desktop platform more it's much easier to operate so go into practice put in your account name so i'll put in mine and i'll put in my and sign in. Okay, so when you sign in, you'll get this kind of view or whatever you left it at, as, you know, the last save layout. Now it is auto saving the last layouts. So this, all this stuff you get if you want to play around with all this, but right now we are focused on charts. So what you have to do is by doing all this stuff, you know, moving all this stuff here, just move out all this stuff. We don't need this race, just close it. By doing all this stuff, you can actually come to a state where I'm not going to do this here. You come to this kind of thing. Okay. You move out all the other windows and then you can move out. I think this also can be moved out. You get a nice chart view. Now you want a palette structure right now. You got only one chart. Okay. So what do you do here? Look at this here. It gives you uh, multiple options. So we are going to choose again. I'm going to show you those. Now I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show you eight charts because it'll, then I have to go and create charts on all of them. Um, or link symbol to all charts link interval let's do link symbol to all charts and are you following what I'm doing so I'm choosing this layout which means now what it's going to do is it will have everything is the same uh, I want to move this thing this is a bit of a pain actually I want to move this thing out yeah and i can move this also up all right okay so what i've got now is i've got sync now i'm going to move this also out all right now what i've got is it says link symbol to all charts now what i would do is this is i'm not going to do it for all of them but uh, i'm just show, showing you what is this what is the time here we want something like a monthly okay this is the dow jones industrials actually and then if you zoom out like this with your uh, cursor okay scroll out scroll down then you'll zoom out okay so all these tricks you know let's make this again something that we want uh, copper let's make this copper I hope it loads quickly now one of the problems on this this platform is loading quickly it loads a bit slowly so now everything has become copper because I said link symbol to all the charts are you guys following what I'm doing yes, sir. okay so now copper what I'm going to do is obviously I want the time frame to be I want the granularity to keep increasing as I go from left to right and top to bottom okay so the symbol will remain the same so I've got this as monthly that I'm going to make this I'm going to click on this window and then I'm going to make this time frame I'm going to make it weekly and then I'm going to zoom out like this I'm not do doing this for all these windows so now you got the hang of it you keep on reducing keep on increasing the granularity as you move to the right and then go down here from here you go to this window okay and then eventually you will come down to what you see in my display you can set up your own display if you want I mean you don't have to have five minutes here you can have one minute normally here I have five minutes okay so this is what will happen is this clear to everyone now okay so this is how you set up the web charts through the web login on the one the same so you can actually have the desktop login as well and then this one also for chart so this is a very good charting system it's a little bit slow in terms of the way it loads 
uh, but it's a pretty good system this is the way i think the charting should be done when you're doing ta you must look at as much data as you can get your hands on okay otherwise you make it a very different kind of picture so when you look at all this stuff so this is copper we'll go back to the analysis of oil so first you have to set up all this stuff and you've seen the other chart as well you see the long-term picture and you have to form a view so you have to form a view so today dharam you're the gatekeeper you have to keep track of how many people have gone out okay so now you have to form a view now view just don't get too confused or uh, you know don't get perplexed about by, by the enormity of the problem okay view can only be either bullish or bearish okay of course there's a third type of view that you can take which becomes very relevant in option trading which is that you take a view that the market will not move much at all you say that the market is going to remain kind of very quiet and it's not really going to move around it's just going to float around here and it's not going to move for many periods of for, for a long period of time that view is very useful in option trading because in that kind of view when you have that kind of view you would just be selling options okay because you would pick up the time decay that we'll discuss when we do the option trading project but that's a third type of view for the moment we will not worry about that kind of view we will just think of assume that there are only two types of views either you're bullish or you're bearish is this clear okay so it's pretty simple you already simplified your life now all you have to do is just think about surfing waves okay and this is what it is actually it's just waves so you have to develop your own skill for you may actually so don't uh, underestimate yourself you may actually find that you have a skill for uh, this kind of pattern recognition you don't know what your skills are unless you actually put yourself to the test okay so you just look at these patterns observe these patterns and eventually you'll develop a feel for the patterns mm -hmm. so you can take a view and it's very simple either you're bullish or bearish so you have to take a call sometimes you may not have a clear view that's also okay okay that is quite different from saying that the market will remain in a range for a long time that's a different view. the third kind of the other kind of view it's not really a view is that i have no view because i'm not getting clarity so that's also okay in which case you don't do anything okay so you take a view here and so when you look at this price action you take a view either there are only two things that can happen okay and let's try and now uh, concretize the view which is already now quite simple either it's bullish or it's bearish now let's make it more concrete so we can be, be very very specific okay in our assumptions there are only two types of assumptions you can make either you make the assumption you see this low over here can you see that which we pointed out maybe i can just um, start this practice thing also so that we'll be, those charts are easier to manipulate okay but you can see this point that i'm referring to here can you see that this point the lowest the highest low so far on this display on this display the highest low so far from which a new high was made okay so if this low breaks then this uptrend that you're looking at this entire uptrend because if you remember here all the way from here this 2016 january low okay all the way from here the um, sequence of higher lows and higher highs has never been broken is this clear to everyone can you see that it has not been broken okay if you look at a certain degree of movement it has not been broken because this one held this pattern has held and now you look at the daily this is the daily chart you see all this while it has not been broken so if this one breaks if this point here whatever that is looks like 64 half or something like that let me just log in here as well So you can make your life very simple if you proceed uh, and you'll see that you're not making a huge number of assumptions and these are actually very very close to reality okay it is always true this statement that we are making that an uptrend consists of higher highs and lows and a downtrend consists of lower highs and lows okay this is not even at the level of a particular model or anything like that when you talk about models you become very specific those can be those statements can be wrong this business that uh, you know when the uh, uh, the the pattern of higher highs and lows is broken then the uptrend is over okay this this statement is like a universal truth okay so you're on very solid ground okay you're not making very aggressive assumptions okay all right so here if we see now we go here let's use this chart okay so the point i was referring to is this one which is around 6415 is this clear actually here this point and if you see you can re read the low over here if you position the cursor the low is what 6458 so 6460 let's say 6460 okay uh, i don't know why it was so 6460 is the low 
okay right so there are only two now you can simplify your assumptions you can make only two assumptions uh, at the high level you can make two assumptions either you say that on this move down that is happening okay on this move down the 6460 is going to break before we make a new high so the high over here so far has been 7706 okay 7706 so the, to simplify your view taking okay and this will make you very disciplined also in your view taking to simplify it you have to just basically take a call that between these two important points that we see the highest high so far 7710 and the highest low from which the new high was made which is uh, whatever the 64 um, 6460 let's say or 6458 uh, <clears throat> between these two which is going to crack first is this making sense to you yes, sir. you have to basically take a call which means your bullish and bearish view it really comes down to taking a call on which is going to break first if you say let's take it one by one if you say that 6458 is going to break first as opposed as compared to 7710 okay mm -hmm. or 77 70 whatever this high is 7706 okay as compared to 7706 64658 is going to break first okay that is price will break below that first then your view is what bullish or bearish yeah. bearish okay so that means essentially you're saying that this is a long uptrend that we saw okay you can see this long uptrend on the this is actually a many multi-year low on the oil price charts okay this low of january 26 or february 2016 this entire rally from here will be uh, at least neutralized okay if this breaks and so that could be one of your views and on this big picture level there are there is only one other view possible that is to say that the other side you take the bullish view and say that no 6458 will not break and in fact 7706 will break first okay so that becomes a bullish view yes that means you are projecting the continuation of this uptrend okay so you is it are you do you agree that now we have simplified matters a lot yes okay and not only have we made matters very sim uh, much simpler we have also become quite precise okay now you see that you have framed your assumptions in such a way that the moment your assumption breaks down the market is going to give you that information straight away okay you don't have to wait uh, like a macroeconomic model or a uh, you know npv model or somewhere where you're using assumptions there are uh, different layers of assumptions and it's very difficult to figure out when your assumptions have actually gone wrong here it's much simpler the moment your assumption breaks down immediately you get to know from the market price action are you following this okay this is very important because especially because you are operating in a zone where you're not doing this is not physics or engineering you're operating in a zone like uh, economics and finance where the level of uncertainty is extremely high so the error rate and forecasting is going to be very high so therefore uh, there is tremendous advantage in having uh, in getting early warnings that your assumptions have broken down so that you can quickly get down to the risk management part right yeah i've repeated this smart but it's very important so yeah along with this we can also have the news prompt or news prompt open like yeah are, are they giving you news because i thought that they're actually oh no, like we can open it on google separately yeah you can open a separate google news and that's the correct way to do it okay if you're trading oil you should have a separate news feed set up for crude oil okay TWS we had yeah TWS you had the news so so you can see you remember you have you can make use of your TWS it's working fine. sorry it's working fine. TWS working fine it's not giving you delayed data or anything no, sir, it's fine. okay but then I think we have since we have already started this project on this let's do it here because I think again what, what will happen is if we operate on futures contracts then I'll again have to teach you the theory of futures contracts and that I'm not sure that I can teach it to you in, uh, fast enough to help you complete. So let's do this project on this. It's not going to make a big difference. So it doesn't matter because your skill set is not going to, the, the training that you're getting by pl playing around with these spot prices is not, uh, is can be transferred to uh, futures trading as well. Okay, because the patterns are very similar. In fact, when you analyze futures prices, by and large you have to work for long term data you have to work with the spot prices okay only towards the end do you gravitate to the latest the active contract so don't worry about that because uh, that will only come only thing that you're missing is the specific knowledge of futures contracts and the technical aspects of trading futures okay all those aspects that we will cover separately so this skill that you're developing okay here if you're developing a skill of um, 
navigating the oil price movements okay this is uh, whatever skill you develop here is completely transferable to trading futures in oil okay so don't worry about that part so we'll do it here because the charts are also quite good here and uh, the uh, you have already seen how to enter the data but i think right now it's too late to migrate again to tws okay so we'll do this project on this thing so are you clear so far about this yes, sir. that you have now the broken it down um, you know whittled it down to a fairly simple set of assumptions okay so now this is your call what you want to do okay you do your own analysis of the pattern and you figure out for yourself do you want to make a bullish bet or do you want to make a bearish bet based on the uh, patterns that you see and here nobody is stopping you we can follow the news on the oil price also and if you want to bring in some element of fundamental analysis into the picture into your analysis into your overall view formation you can do that okay you can read all the news you can watch bloomberg tv what is happening with the iran sanctions now there's some further tensions because the saudis may also react you know there's this problem with the murder of a journalist that journalist that journalist who got killed now they're threatening the us is threatening some sanctions they may come up with some sanctions the saudis may react by cutting some output so that is also bullish for the oil price in theory okay so all these factors you you should keep on absorbing the news and you can bring it onto also you can incorporate all this into your view formation as well this is clear so far is everyone following yes, <coughs> so now let's say that uh, what you have decided to do is you have taken the bullish view you have taken the view that this um, 6458 is not going to break okay now in this case you bring into your now you bring the underlying position knowledge to the picture okay so your underlying position is long and your view on the market is bullish so therefore your action is to what Okay. hold on not to do anything right so in this case because your underlying position is long and your market view is bullish okay therefore your action will be not to do anything okay so therefore obviously that's as i said you will not do anything you are expecting that's the situation we were discussing yesterday okay so your basic plan is not to do anything and therefore you expect that 70 706 will break and the market will go even higher maybe 80 85 dollars etc and then you'll be able to hedge your production at a much higher price okay right so um so while i remember i'll just try to uh, there was a uh, there's an interesting have you guys heard of uh, ryanair nobody heard of ryanair Ryanair is an Irish airline. It's a very dominant airline. It's a very well-run airline. It's a very profitable airline also. It's one of the dominant airlines in Europe. It's actually a regional carrier, kind of like Air Asia kind of uh, thing. So Ryanair, actually, the reason I discuss Ryanair is because they are um, they're doing uh, they they hedge a lot. Okay. So a little bit of the discussion on um, I think I put it here. Yeah. So I'll just put this into your. There's a there's an interview with. Um, uh, the CEO of Ryanair, so it is not connected to this discussion that we put it in yesterday. Uh, so there's a discussion with you can just watch this interview on YouTube. There's a view. so he's talking about his hedging also. Now these guys have seemed to have hedged at around 60, uh, 58 dollars or 60 dollars or something. So there and he's talking about other airlines which are not hedged. So this airline hedging discussion which we had, you can add some more flesh to the, those ideas by listening to this discussion. Okay, so. Um, so these guys are quite active in hedging in the hedging their uh, jet fuel risk so um, okay before i close this in the meantime i'll just show you there's a new class which lalita will tell you about so this is your class today sorry i'm jumping around i just want to close this this is class today then we have one or 29th last period then 31st first period and then this is the one that has been added for the one that was missed so 5th of november okay last period I tried to mess up your Choti Diwali also, but uh, <laughs> Lalita said no, 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 do it on fifth. Okay, is this clear? What? No. No. Then you attend. See, one minute, one minute. Now you are all, one minute. You are all adults now. Don't behave like crybabies. Okay, if you want, if you wanted to have time off, many of your seniors have done this. They're very smart. Yeah, they're very smart. They maintain a high run rate all the way to the end and then they take the last four classes off nothing wrong with that okay although we don't want to encourage that but i'm saying that if you do that at least you're smart 
okay at least you're not stupid you're smart you maintained the high hundred and took the last four classes off that's okay so then you don't be a cry baby if you wanted to do all this you should have planned it ahead of time yeah this is clear we don't have the somebody is already outside yeah. you can use a lasso just block them and draw yeah what is the problem? What? So if you have a question, so then you can just tell me, you know, which let Lalita send me a mail. I've already done it for a lot of people, Sandhya, Pallavi. So then you send, let Lalita send me a mail. So, um, Satyam also has been corrected. Many people have been, uh, that's been adjusted for many people. Just sit, Giri, just wait. Follow the discipline. Okay, so this is your. Uh, so this this may mail may not come from Lalita for a long time. So I'm just informing you. Okay, so you have a class here. All right, guys. Now let's get back to work. I needed to close that spreadsheet. Okay, what are we saying? Let's say that if you have if you formed a bullish view and you know that you so that follow the logic. Okay, this is the logic that you need to learn. You can transplant this logic to all other situations all other markets and all other positions so your in this market your underlying position is long your uh, after your view formation the view you come out with is bullish so therefore the action is not to do anything okay so that's your basic plan not to do anything and you have a plan that you expect prices to rise eventually above 7706 maybe 80 85 etc and then you'll hedge at a higher level okay that's when I went uh, segued into the Ryanair discussion yeah one sec so remember also what we discussed yesterday about the contingency plan you know what a contingency plan is that's a backup plan in case your basic plan does not work what's your plan backup plan this is very important especially from a risk management when we are talking about risk management like I said your basic plan essentially is uh, your forecast okay it's based on your forecast your forecast is bullish and that's why your basic plan is not to do anything not to hedge okay so your contingency plan is for the scenario when your forecast goes wrong is this clear are you following the structure so you have to have because i said this level of uncertainty is very high okay so forecast accuracy is likely to be quite low so you need to be prepared for that so you need to have a basic plan but you need to also have a contingency plan so that you are not caught off guard by the market okay so the contingency plan in this case will be to leave what kind of order let's say you are hedging and unhedging 100% at a time then what will be the order you leave for your contingency plan in this situation is my question clear no so the basic plan here is underlying position is long market view is bullish so the basic plan is not to do anything not to hedge observe the market and hope to hedge at higher levels yeah so the contingency plan will be and here we are assuming 100% hedging on hedging just to make it simple so there will be a stop sell order for 1 million barrels here you can only do your underlying position is 1 million barrels here you can only do uh, 1000 barrels at a time on this platform so you trade multiple times okay uh, so there will be a stop sell but conceptually there will be a stop sell for 100 or a sell stop order at uh, uh, for 100 percent of the position okay at just below this uh, level of 64 um, 6458 i think is the level yeah 6458 is this clear okay you can look at the pipettes also the third decimal i can't even see it it's i think it's 6458.8 so you can actually go as uh, uh, you know you can there is another bid offer element in this uh, which i have to uh, I don't know if I you want to spend some time doing that uh, okay let's look at that I think it's an important thing to be aware of okay now this is something else that you have to learn about trading systems. this is part of the learning of uh, um, about trading systems and the quirks of each trading system every trading you worked on TWS TWS is a very sophisticated piece of software okay so when you place stops TWS gives you options if you go into the settings you'll see it gives you options you know remember when you say stop okay if you say if you place the you know if you place a stop loss uh, level okay now obviously you have, you have to choose a level that is just below that so if it is 64.58.8 I'm going to say 64.58.7 is it 8 yeah it is 8 64.58 is the low so I will my stop trigger conceptually is going to be 64.58.7 
because seven if the market trades at seven that means that uh, that 64.58.8 low has been broken okay you can say why are you being so I think sometimes they were the Pakshu used to say no let's use a 5% band so let's allow 5% break okay so I think all those the refinements are not really uh, materially useful so just keep it simple 64.58.7 means that's my stop trigger level now the question is when you place this uh, this system does not give you too many options but TWS gives you a lot of options so when the market is watching for 64.58.7 it can watch for it in multiple ways okay so the system will ask you on a sophisticated system you should be aware of this uh, concept on a sophisticated say the sophisticated system it will ask you do you want this 64.58.7 to be monitored on a bid basis or an offer. Or offer basis or a traded basis you understand the difference remember we looked at all the order books you saw how all the stuff was moving around bids and offers and trades are also happening on the TWS also you can see when trades are happening it is highlighting the trade price okay so there are three things to be aware of especially when you are setting a stop level or any other order trigger level okay now there's an, an additional refinement to be uh, thought about which is the system is going to ask you do you want this to be watched on a bid level or an offer level or a uh, traded level okay so if you say bid level okay the moment the bid comes to 64 here you can see the bid offer prices yes. you can see the bid offers 65 1 and 68 1 okay this is a little bit wide because we are still in uh, I think I don't think London has opened yet so that's why this is a little bit wide okay it will this will have to wait till New York actually okay but you can see 65 1 68 1 is the bid offer okay so if you have so this like a three cent bid offer it's a bit wide uh, it should be a little narrower uh, because if you look at the TWS you'll see that there is a one cent uh, bid offer it's very tight on the TWS well that's a direct futures contract this is a CFD which is based on the futures contract anyway so 65 8 65 65 and 68 is the bid offer okay so if you place the order on a bid basis the moment the bid goes to whatever that 58 7 level okay the moment the bid goes there it will trigger the order it will release a market sell order okay but ideally when you are putting a sell stop order you should not put the bid okay the right way to put because the bid cannot if the like, see right now you see the bid offer is quite wide it's three cents okay in liquid and when New York comes in I expect that the bid offer will become tighter it will become maybe closer to one and a half okay so uh, then so what will happen is if the bid offer widens for some reason okay if the bid offer widens for some reason then what will happen is automatically your uh, order might get triggered are you following what I'm saying yes, sir. because you've told the system to watch the break of that level on a bid basis that is that should never be done for a sell stop similarly for a buy stop you should never call uh, ask the system to watch on a offer basis because the offer the spread widens the offer can easily go above the level and the market will not actually trade there are you following spreads can sometimes depending on what happens suddenly if you get some news that US is imposing sanctions on Saudi Arabia prices can become very volatile okay the markets all kinds of stuff happens in markets okay so if you saw like there are historical events which you guys have not seen because you're not maybe not even born in 1990 there was a coup in uh, Russia against Mikhail Gorbachev there was an attempted coup suddenly the spreads on all the foreign exchange markets like dollar Swiss went to 10 10 big figures basically like what you see here on dollar swiss now is 9948 9949 right so this became like 99 and 1.09 it became so wide because the market was in panic because there was a coup in russia so all these kinds of things can happen so this is the point that you need to be aware of that anything can happen in markets okay there is no there not there are no limits here anything can happen so here especially in otc markets so therefore uh, if you put a bid if you put a sell stop on a bid basis that is not the right approach are you following this or is it going over your head no. Tushar I hope you haven't given up like no, yesterday no, no, no. okay so logic what I'm saying is if you are putting a sell stop you are putting a sell stop right you are looking for a break of this level this level break being trend. yeah you want to price you want to um, not the one yeah 64.58.8 you want to exit when the market breaks 64.58.8 and you have set 64.58.7 as your trigger price now the system can watch the trigger in three ways it can watch as 64.58.7 bid 
or offered or traded the three different things okay so on when you are putting a sell stock never put it on a bid basis because if the spread widens the bid can easily go below the uh, uh, trigger level and it will trigger your order okay it's just door not fully closed metal just close this door fully just slam it shut okay so never put the sell stock on a bid basis are you following okay so you can only put it on a trade on a traded basis or on a offer basis okay so the traded basis will get you into the market quick uh, get will trigger the order faster typically okay when the market actually trades there it will uh, give, get you into the it will release the sell order uh, market sell order uh, or offer is even later offer is going to be even later it's much more I mean, that means you're giving it like kind of like what the Pangshu said give it a little bit more room to penetrate give it five percent penetration of the level that is kind of like setting it on an offer setting a sell stop on an offer basis how is the system supposed to watch that trigger on what basis offer bid or traded okay so traded is the right way according to me is the right way to do it and that's what the uh, offer offer basis Offer basis like if I say that 64.58.7 watch watch this level on an offer basis so it will wait till the offer goes to 64.58.7 which means by that time the bid is much lower the bid is much lower the bid might be 64.55.7 and the offer will then come to 64.58.7 so by that time the bid is much lower okay and the mid mid price which is like the traded price the proxy for the traded price the market has already traded sufficiently below your trigger level but you have kept because you have kept it on an offer basis your order is just being triggered now because the offer takes time to come down right are you following now okay so this is the rule basically have you uh, you can listen to the video once again and understand it that in a, you have to be prepared for a more sophisticated system in real life like a TWS which will give you the option to specify how the stop trigger is to be watched or how an MIT trigger is to be watched is it to be watched on a bid basis or an offer basis or a traded basis traded is the best way according to me but certainly you should never put a sell stop trigger to be watched on a bid basis and you should never put okay now let's do Namita and uh, Lakshay write down Namita and Lakshay <laughs> We'll, we'll have that uh, more penalties, okay? Okay, all right guys, you have to remain engaged, okay? You can't just switch off like this, okay? Because you have taken finance. I was just wondering why 58 people have taken finance <laughs> because I don't think 58 people are that interested. It, it's a lot of hard work. You have to remain engaged, okay? Um, so the rule that I'm giving you, you can listen to this and understand the logic once again later on. But the rule that I'm giving you on a sell stop order, you should never place it to be watched on a bid basis. Okay. And similarly on a buy stop order, you should never set it to be watched on an offer basis. Traded is the best. You can want, if you want, you can make the sell stop uh, trigger. You can instruct the system to watch the sell stop trigger on a uh, bid basis or the buy, uh, sorry, on the buy stop trigger on a bid basis and the sell stop trigger on a offer basis if you want this is all done to ensure the liquidity no no it is all done to it's just giving the system more specific instructions mainly the idea is that you don't want to exit the system you don't want to exit the position unless the market has actually broken that level you see the problem with a sell stop if you place a bid if you place a sell stop to be watched on a bid basis any kind of market panic when the price is near this price but it has not broken this level if the market goes into some kind of panic based on some news suddenly the bid the bid offer will widen and the bid will fall below the price but the market has not traded below the price okay so that's why you should never put the sell stop on a bid basis and never put the buy stop on an offer basis okay? unfortunately on this system okay this is why there are many flaws with this uh, or in this Oanda system this system watches stops on a uh, sell stops on a bid basis and buy stops on an offer basis okay this is one of the flaws and I've written to them many times uh, to uh, change this but they are not willing to change it so uh, this is a problem that you have to be aware of so what you have to do I want to discuss this it's a finer point but I think you have to be aware of all these aspects because it will teach you 
uh, the different ways to look at a system and how to be aware of using a system okay so what you have to do so now you understand there is a problem in the system okay so if I do let's say if I do this if I place my sell stop the lowest price is 64.588 okay that's the critical level which if it breaks it will break the uptrend so I'm choosing the trigger as 64.58.7 okay now if I enter 64 suppose I enter here now obviously one problem you already know is that if I place now if I want to set up to the entry cell and I have to choose let's say I choose a thousand contracts and what is the price we looked at 58.7 no 64.58.7 so all right now if I do this what's going to happen is the moment the bid goes to 64.58.7 okay it is uh, it's going to trigger my order okay it is going to release a market sell order into the system okay now the problem is here's the problem okay this is a little bit complex just pay attention and try to understand it but it's important to be aware of all these complexities if i place i can't play 64587 let's understand why okay because the system is going to watch the orders on a bid basis sell stop will be watched on a bid basis and buy stop will be watched on an offer basis okay now what is the problem now these charts that are that we are looking at this chart that i'm looking at okay which is showing me the lowest price here as uh, 64.58.8 these are actually not uh, you know based on high low bid and high offer and all that these are actually mid price charts you understand what is mid price mid price is nothing but bid plus offer by two bid plus offer divided by two is the mid price okay so mid price in this kind of a system where you don't get to see the traded prices on TWS you get to see the traded prices what price is actually trading on this system you don't get to see the traded prices you get to see only bids and offers so the mid price can be taken as a proxy for what is the traded price typically okay in this kind of a system okay so even in when you do derivatives pricing normally what people do is they take a mid price they derive a mid price the theoretical price and then they add a spread and then they quote they add a spread and they create the bid and offer so first they derive the mid price so the bid plus offer by two is the mid price okay now these charts are actually mid mid, mid price charts okay so if you see if you if you do a different chart you do a min max chart you can do a min max chart also uh, but I don't think it's required for this uh, project because you just I'm just highlighting this uh, here if you create a min max chart this is a different type of uh, chart okay you this you see the problem here when we were looking at the mid price charts what was the low 60 58 8 okay what is the low now <laughs> 56 a so you see the difference that means when the mid price low was shown to you as 64 58 8 the bid at that time was actually 64 56 8 okay so if you are placing a stop so there's another way to place the stop is and when you come down to the stop level you get the actually the problem with this kind of chart is these are not nice to look at I mean at least I don't find them nice to look at these are nobody looks at these kind of charts in in the real, in the real world okay so but this at least these guys give you the min max chart so the best way i think to uh, to understand so you understood this problem yes sir. because those bar charts we were looking at they are actually mid price charts so the high low on the bar chart will only be the mid price high low which is bid plus offer by two but if you but actually what you can see is when the mid price low was mid the chart mid price chart was showing you a low of 58.8 the min the actual low bid at that time was 56 8 okay so two cents difference so therefore if you place the stop at 58 7 okay if you place the stop at 58 7 the bid can just go to 58 6 or whatever 50 even if the bid goes to 58 7 it will immediately trigger your sell order which means what will happen is that even though the market actually did not go to a new low okay because when your bid is at 58 7 the mid price is not 58.7 the mid price is higher are you following most people have lost me is it too, too confusing yes sir. too confusing it's a bouncer it's a bouncer one sec now try to pay attention uh have you understood this point mid price versus min uh, the bid the min max is showing you the low bid and the high offer 
okay so what we are seeing is because of the fact that these uh, bar charts which i was showing you earlier if we look at the two charts separately okay okay here now we can do it weekly yeah this chart you see the same point 13th august 13th august these charts the bar charts are normally i like to look at bar charts that's what most people do they look at candles or bars nobody looks at min max min max charts when they're forming a view okay so when forming a view i see i use the bar charts but these are these bar chart high lows are derived from the mid price high lows okay so the mid price low was actually 658.8 64588 13th august okay but 64588 can you read that yes sir where is it here 64588 l okay but the same thing on the same data point when i look at the same point here actually the low the bid low this is the min max chart is showing you low bid high offer uh, sorry yeah low bid high offer so here the low bid was 568 So that means the spread must have the offer must have been fifty eight eight. What is it? Fifty six? Uh, no, must have been sixty eight. Because it is fifty eight. No. So the offer must have been sixty eight point six zero eight. What happened? Now Tushar has lost. <laughs> okay. So the point is, uh, the point is that when you are placing stops, what you should do. is use your you can use the bar chart for forming a general view because this is quite messy or if you are comfortable with the min max chart you can just use that chart but when you are placing the stops look at the min max chart and find out the true level because the system is going to watch stops on a bid basis and a, a sell stops on a bid basis buy stops on an offer basis a lot easier but that's okay because in a way it's good because you uh, through this exercise you will be sensitized to this aspect of any because tomorrow when you go to work in some other bank you might trade in a different system altogether a third system so you should be alerted to these aspects of a system so when you get a new system you should be alert to all these aspects you should check this how does the system trigger orders is there a default like in oanda there's a default it uses for sell stops it uses low bid for buy stops it will use high offer Okay, there is no for, way for you to change it. On TWS, it gives you a way to customize it. So you need you need to be aware that different systems have different nuances. So you need to be alerted to this aspect of a trading system. So this is okay, I think. If you need to learn about these things, okay, everything will not be simple. Tomorrow you'll come up with a fourth system or a fifth system that you have to work in. It will have all kinds of quirks. At least you should know what to look out for in the system. Are you following yes, what we are saying? Okay. so it's very let's simplify it now and say that you form your view on bar charts if you want but when you are setting your stops you set them using the min max chart so now we see the low is 568 so now i'll set my stop at 567 are you following now yes sir okay so now what i do is i change this to 567 all right Okay, and then I can just uh, put the entry sell order. So, again, also remember this. So now you can see this order is there. Okay. Okay. So this is one thing. So the long story. We had a long discussion on this. I'm going to go back to these charts. Um, so we were discussing. We were discussing uh, how you're going to go about running your, uh, you know, running your hedge book. Okay. So you form this view now. You have already come to the point of the contingency plan. So the contingency plan was to place a stop sell order or a sell stop order at. Now we have placed it at that level. Okay. So now you are covered on both sides. You have your basic plan. You are observing the market and you are hoping that the market keeps on going up. Okay. And if it doesn't go your way, then at least you will be hedged below 64, 56, whatever. Okay. Is this clear now? Okay. So this has to be the approach. And then obviously you are going to use. uh you're going to use uh you're going to use multiple time frames okay if you think that the price is going to go up at some point because right now the short term price action in crude oil is quite bearish if you look at the short term price action if you make it smaller like if you look at 1 hour or something it is quite bearish okay 
so at the least what you can see is so so use the idea of multiple time frames you have taken a big picture view by looking at the weekly charts and you feel that that low on the weekly chart is going to hold and we are going to make fresh new weekly highs okay fresh highs on the weekly chart okay but then if that's going to happen at some point of time the short term price action has to become bullish mm -hmm. do you follow that okay this is why we are saying that the larger time frames will dominate the smaller time frames the large, remember when we discussed cyclicality yes. we discussed that uh, larger uh, cycles have to dominate the smaller cycles yes, yes. it is kind of a tautological statement in mathematics you heard this expression uh, what is tautological tautological means it's obvious there's no need to prove it okay it is obvious so obviously if, if the larger cycle has to remain valid then the smaller cycle has to obey the larger cycle and turn around right because if this if this down if you have this uptrend on the weekly charts and this uptrend is not to be broken this part which you are zooming into now this part which you see here when you zoom into this chart uh, one hour chart you can see this decline in greater detail but somewhere it has to quickly turn around because it's almost close to hitting that low, low level which you are saying is not going to break so somewhere the short term price action has to become bullish so what you can do now is also as you are watching you have to watch for some signs of short term bullishness short term bullish price action the first warning will be if the price can rise above the 7010 because you can see here on the short term charts do you see a downtrend on the one hour charts you can see a downtrend so here you have this one high second high third high you can take this if you want you can take this as a fourth high okay i would just take this as a third high then this is the fourth high yeah and then you have a low you have a low a low and another low okay so at the least it must break over this 70 this high so that it can destroy this so it can neutralize this downtrend here on the early charts right then it gives you hope that your view basic view is correct that maybe again it is starting the upward journey this is clear are you following so this is basically what has to be done okay and another thing that you have to do is obviously you have to watch uh, your you have to manage your risk in the sense if you are if you are hedging or unhedging you need to uh, you know obviously here you don't want to operate on a hundred percent basis if you, if you want you can do it but the way you can manage your risk is by uh, splitting up your position maybe not doing a hundred percent at one go so that you have a little bit more flexibility but here i don't want to put constraints on you you can just do whatever your view suggests okay that's one way to manage because remember here you can also make losses you can also make losses because you may decide <coughs> not to hedge okay because the underlying position pnl you can't do anything about and that's the same for all the teams it is only a hedge position pnl that will make the difference so you could make money or you could also lose money so another thing that you have to look out for which we haven't had the time to have this discussion on this topic is that when you are running a active hedging program or a dynamic hedging program okay it's a good point that Tanuj made yesterday that i had not i was mentioning active and uh, passive but in the notes i had written static and dynamic so static is the same as passive dynamic is the same as active okay so another decision problem is actually a decision problem okay we have not yet discussed that aspect that when you are running a dynamic hedging program another decision problem that you have to take uh, you have to solve is how much money should be put on the table as risk capital okay okay if you're running let's say a, a jet fuel hedging program uh, for Ryanair <coughs> one of the and if you're running a dynamic hedging program you have to also take a decision on how much money are we willing to lose and what at what point do we say that okay enough is enough no more dynamic hedging let's just lock in all the exposure and hedge everything now and just sit on it are you following what i'm saying because in this program you can keep on making losses okay so that is another actual discussion that actually has to go into the uh it's been incorporated into the case which is that when you have a situation like this how does a company decide if they are running a dynamic how much ca risk capital should they put on the table for this dynamic hedging program five million dollars ten million hundred million whatever it is okay so how do you come out with that decision not so much the actual answer but how do you arrive at that decision so for your own sake you have certain amount of uh, capital given to you okay you need to come out with a number i'll leave that to you for your project you need to decide a number okay and make sure that you stay uh, within that number so if you say that we are not going to lose more than uh, you know five million dollars in this whole project that should be our cap 
then you when you trade initially then you make sure that you don't trade in for the full position or you don't let the losses multiply okay you don't let the losses multiply you have to watch your losses if you have said that you're not going to lose more than five million dollars for the whole duration of the project okay then on the first day itself if you lose four million dollars then it's not working right are you following what i'm saying yes, it's the same thing like if you go into a casino let's say you can play there are many skill based games you can play in the casino like blackjack poker these are all skill based games these are not gambling games okay yes. in india we have this peculiar mindset you know all kinds of card games are gambling and all casino games are gambling that's not true poker is a highly skilled game the guys who win poker championships World Champions, they have like $10 million, $15 million prize money, okay? And there's one guy who's been winning for the last four years. So poker is a game of skill. So is blackjack. Okay, these are all skill games. So if you go, let's say if you're going to go into a casino with a plan that I'm going to play blackjack or whatever, right? So you go in with a stake. You go in with $10,000, let's say. Okay, so there should be a plan. Now that $10,000 is your risk capital. Let's say you're going to play for three days. Okay. Now, if you go in with ten thousand, you don't go and bet ten thousand on the first game itself. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You have to apportion your risk capital. If you're going to be playing for three days, maybe you do four thousand on the first day, four thousand on the second day, then two thousand on the next day. You have this kind of split. So this is how you apportion your risk capital so that you don't lose all your money. Your betting capital should not be gone in one day. The same thing you have to apply. The same logic you have to apply to your project. If your project is running for five weeks. Maybe you have a plan that in one week, over five weeks, we will not lose more than five million. So a simple way to manage that further down the, uh, you know, in terms of splitting it down is then you say, in any given week, we will not lose more than one million. So that if every week we lose money, we still don't lose more than five million. Okay. So this is a very, very important aspect of, uh, you know, of uh, managing any kind of uh, risk book, active or passive, that you have to manage, you have to shepherd your, you have to be clear about your risk capital. Unfortunately, what happens in industry is many firms are even publicly listed firms are not systematic about this. They don't think about their risk capital before entering into such a venture. They don't think about the risk capital. They don't manage it systematically. But this is how it should be done. Before you go somewhere, you have to before you go in for a venture, like even going into a casino to play blackjack for three days. That's actually a very calculated risky venture. OK, but there's nothing wrong with that. If you can manage your risk. If you start losing ten thousand dollars, then Tanuj will say, "Let's borrow some money from Ajayan. Let's borrow some money from Jayant, and let's bet another twenty thousand. You know, I'm not going to lose." So, if you start doing that, then you're already headed for trouble. You have to be able to control your risk. Okay. So you have a plan. You go in with. You make a plan. You go in, and then you execute the plan mechanically. You do not waver from the plan. If you waver from your risk management plan, you're dead. Okay, so you have to man just develop this discipline. So you can apply this logic in your own uh, in this project management as well. Okay, in sorry, these are good. Okay, very good. Okay, all right. Okay, so are you guys now a little bit clear about what has to be done? Yes. Okay, so let's spend a little bit more on fun. So technical, I think we have covered most of the aspects. Yes. Okay, so you take the view and then all the last part of the discussion that we had on risk management and on uh, and deciding what your risk capital is that I'll leave it to you. Okay, and then apportioning your risk capital between the periods. So get all this systematic thinking into your head that okay, you have five weeks, you know, say five million dollars, one million each week. You don't have to be so conservative. You can maybe put two million in the first week. Then if you lose that two million, then you can cut it down in the next week. There are many ways to do it. You can play around on your own. But the idea is that there must be some shepherding of risk capital. Okay, it must be, uh, you must, you should not just die straight away. You should die from a thousand cuts. Are you following what I'm saying? That is, you should not just go and blow up everything on the first day. You should just bleed to death slowly. <laughs> you know, your, your, your risk capital slowly, you lose every every week, you lose one million. Okay? Every week, you lose one million. You should not lose five million in the first week. Okay? Is this clear? So, don't get uh, demotivated by my analogy. Okay? <laughs> okay, guys, now let's get to FA. So, TA, I think we have covered. Let's get give you some ideas for FA. Uh, so for the TA part is the See, so we have shown you how to take a view. Okay, now this business of how to take a view that you have to refine on your own. And as I said, it's just like surfing. Don't be, uh, don't be worried about that fact that you don't know anything about oil prices or anything. 
there is, this is a perfectly legitimate approach there are many people making lots of money who are trading from a purely technical basis they might as well not know what this price is whether it's crude oil where it is made how it is how people drill for oil they don't know anything about any, any of these things but you can make money just by trading from as if you're surfing so this is perfectly fine most important thing is risk management that is the most important thing in in this business okay all right okay we have still got uh, we have to cover there's a lot of time people are already getting restless don't get restless one minute let me just i'm just going to close this so that we have a little more memory how to close a trade and wind up sorry what's your question again how to close the trade okay let's say do i have any okay I, let's do a trade one minute one minute guys lot of activity going on lots of murmuring and please pay attention he's asking a question how to play how to close a trade in oanda let me first for that i need to first buy something okay let me just i'm just going to buy it okay so order executed okay okay so now i've already gone long you can see this okay so now i have a position you can either go to trades okay or you can go to positions now suppose i have uh, suppose i put on suppose i buy crude oils uh, you know five more times okay so i will have five trades but i'll have only one position it will aggregate all the amounts and it will show me the full amount if i buy 100 units five times when i go to positions it will show me only 500 units one row but when i go to trades it will show me five trades of 100 okay so depending on whether you want to if you want to close the whole position then you just go here and click on this and Sir, it is a market. Sir, we are closing at the market. Yeah. Sir, we are going to close at some limit. Uh, then you place a limit sell order. Somehow we have to modify. One minute. Okay. Then in that case, okay, let's do it. I understand your question now. You go to this order. You modify. You put in a take profit. Now first, you have to click on modify. So you highlight that order. Okay. You go there. You highlight this trade. Okay. First, it will give you the close option. Then you modify it. Then you place a take profit. You can place a stop loss also. So what is trailing? Stop. Trailing stop is essentially the idea behind the. I'll just give you the idea of the trailing stop. The trailing stop is this. The trailing stop idea is that suppose I had, um, suppose I had bought oil at. Now suppose I had bought oil at the at at let's say the this point, okay, and then it went up, okay, and then it made this high, came back. Say I had bought it over here, okay. And so I'm watching it goes here. Then it so initially when I bought it here, my stop was over here. Okay. When I bought it here, my stop was over here. Let's see. Now it goes up, makes this pattern, then goes and makes another high. Okay. So the when it makes another high like this, I can see what is going to happen now is that see I was obviously bullish when I that's why I bought it. Okay. So now it's made a fairly important low here and then made a fresh high. So I can already see one low, second low first high second high okay so the basic trend structure has developed an uptrend has developed now what needs to happen to neutralize this uptrend it needs to break below this this clear this level where i put the thing so then what i'm going to do now is when when i had gone long here my stop was over here because my view is bullish so what is the logic that will make me exit my position the neutralization of the uptrend okay then broad terms the logic that will drive me to exit my position is the neutralization of the uptrend so the point at which the uptrend will be neutralized has now changed when i first started i assumed that this was the uptrend so uh, this is where from the uptrend began okay so that's why the stop was here so now that stop that point has changed so now that point is here so what i will do now i will modify my stop loss okay from here i'll click on that trade I'll do modify and then I'll change the stop loss to this level. This is called a trading stop. It is trailing because it is always uh, less favorable than the current market. Okay, even if you looked at a short position, the same logic will apply. It would be a trailing stop. It would be less favorable than the current market. And it is trailing because it is trailing the market. So in the sense that, suppose uh, GABA is walking ahead and somebody is trailing him so that 
Uh, as he walks 10 paces, the other guy also walks 10 paces. Yes. So it is actually kind of following the market in that sense, right? Is this clear? So that means it is like the proxy of circuit to circuit. The same thing. That is the point. That is the point. So it's a way, one minute, one minute. It's a way of, uh, this is a good point that if you remember, I had not discussed. One sec, guys. We still have some time. Let me cover this important point. Okay. Okay. There's too much talking going on here, guys. Be careful. One sec. There's an important point that he has reminded me of. Remember in your notes, I, I think I put this point that you can, there is no need to actively solve 7.2. Yes, that yes, is sir. a legitimate approach. I've already told you this. Yes, okay. So this is so that's okay. So that's good. So I'm just refreshing that idea. So what I just showed Sahil just now is that I bought this here. Okay. And that time the stop was over here. Now as the market makes a new high. Okay. After making another low here. And then um, I can actually raise my stop loss from here to here. Okay, this is a trailing stop. This is called a trailing stop because it is kind of following the market and trailing the market. And this is the way that you actually use 7.1. Remember what 7.1 is? Exit on loss. Okay, exit on loss actually means exit at a price less favorable than the current market. That's what it actually means. Okay, so this will happen now. What will happen at this point? At now that the market has gone all the way up to here. Where do you think my stop is now? Is it still here? No, no, no. it has actually gone up all the way here. Okay. So what has happened with this oil that I bought at this level at 34.95, let's say. Now, initially my stop was here at 25. Now this stop has gone all the way up to 64. Okay. So then in this way, I have never kept any take profit order. Right. You follow that? I never kept any take profit order. I just kept on trailing my stop. This is called trailing my stop. I just kept on raising the stop as the market kept on making new highs. Okay, from new higher lows. I kept on moving my stop. So this is how, <coughs> this is again a very legitimate approach. Okay, that uh, it simplifies your system for the one decision you don't have to take. That 7.2 decision you would never have to take at all. Okay, you are just uh, trailing your stop and using 7.1 to proxy 7.2. Is this clear to everybody now? You follow what, what was meant? If you remember uh, uh, the Donkian trading system, remember the Donkian system? Can you see that this is what that is also doing? Yes. In that, no, so Donkian makes buys on four week highs and sells on four week lows. Okay, so when you once you buy on the Donkian, you never really actively take profit. You are only using a trailing stop. So the donkey also has this feature that it does not actively solve the take profit problem. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Ishan is keeping time again, waiting for the end. Uh, it is over? Yes, sir. Oh, two minutes are left. <laughs> huh? You was <laughs> No, there are two minutes left, guys. One sec. Let me just quickly one sec. No, we have some serious business. Okay, one sec. We have some serious business. I still have to show you FA. Okay, so let's let's finish that business. Okay. One minute, one minute. Don't behave like kids. One sec. Don't behave like kids. Okay, just let's get this job done so that the next class we can move on to uh, more theoretical. Uh, it's very slow. No, 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 there are two minutes left. I don't know why it's not loading. Okay, so something. So, what you can do is I'll just give you a clue. One second. For your fundamental, you may be a little bit starved of FA information on crude oil, copper, etc. Okay, so what you can do is you can go to the CME Group website and look for the futures pages for those, look for the futures contracts for those commodities. Those three commodities and even the currency futures you can get. Okay, uh, so go there on the CME web pages for those contracts. You will see lots of information, lots of videos. CME makes a lot of videos. Uh, and I'll try to send you some links later on on FA information. But on the CME contract pages, you will find video links. People are giving market commentary. Okay, so you can look at that and get fundamental information and set up a news feed also. All right, okay, guys, you're done. Thank you, sir. You
you can take your cable. Your cable. Okay. Fundamental analysis is... Yeah, one minute. Do you have a, anybody have a technical question? Then I will uh, make sure the video keeps running. Right. Y'all is technical? Y'all is technical? Yeah, what is it? Uh, this fundamental analysis. Uh, we use all the uh, uh, all the news in the fundamental analysis, all the contextual and yeah, 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 all the news. I don't know why this thing is. Uh, my system is also. Yeah, what are you saying? In FA, yeah, FA is all the uh, news. News is all part of FA. Plus, all your economic data. And view, view is formed according to that. Yeah. So, you see, right now, the fundamental analysis of oil seems to be uh, well, it's balanced on both sides. Uh, there's a lot of expectation of the US supply. sanction coming in. It is expected out. So, we will be bullish or bearish? The sanctions by itself. Obviously, are bullish because the oil, yes, be, yes, yes. the Iranian oil, will be taken off the market, so supply will reduce. But there are also other aspects of supply. But generally, it seems to be, uh, I mean, the, the drift of the fundamental analysis seems to be for stronger oil. We are dealing in spots in oil Yeah. So that that why we are looking for this futures and this is just to give you information. Don't worry about the instrument. Like if we were working on it, well, then yeah. we should. So this comes back to what Tushar was also saying. Don't worry about the instrument. Your market outlook <coughs> is unlikely to change uh, from instrument to instrument. Because those are just instruments. <laughs> Suppose I have uh, taken a no question on particular asset. Okay. So earlier it was going, earlier it was the price was rising. Now I have purchased it over 1000. Okay. Now price has gone to 900. Okay. Okay. So if I was, um, if I am running a hedge book and I am hedging the, so if it, it is more than 1000, price is more than 1000, so I will not take any action because it is already in my favor. Okay. <coughs> But when it goes to nine, so you are saying your underlying position is long at one thousand. Yes. Mm. But if the price was rising, so I will not take any action. But when the price starts falling, and then I have not taken any action, so now I will go long on it. But that is what I am saying. Your underlying position is short or long? Underlying position is long. No, then if it is falling, then yes, you go short, not long, in your hedge book. Okay, I will go short. If you go long, you are going to be increasing your underlying position. Okay, your total position. If I, position, I, if I your go, net if I go short. Then uh, later on, when I cover up that question, when I close that question, it cannot go. If the position cannot be more than the underlying position, na? initial underlying. Initial position position cannot go beyond the initial position. Mm -hmm. That is what I mean. So if you start with thousand, if your initial underlying position is thousand units, you're saying thousand units, or is it wrong? at price thousand, the price of thousand. So let's say it is hundred units. Then when the price, if you think prices will keep on rising from one thousand, then you don't take any action. If you feel prices are falling now, okay, they start to fall below one thousand. Then you have to start looking to hedge. And how much you hedge is between zero. 100% of your position, of your underlying position. Okay. Okay. So, yeah.